The action picks up from where it left off the week before, and this is Knight Rider meets Speed. Kit has the Hafnium bomb in the trunk, and he has to stay at 100 miles per hour and not deviate from his course, which is to head north, otherwise the bomb will blow with a 10 mile radius. Considering what a few grams of Hafnium can do, I would shudder to think what a more sizable amount could do. It doesn't bear worth thinking about. The action does not slow down as the audience is in much of an adrenaline rush as the characters are. I did like the touch of Kit going to attack mode with lights and sirens so that would be able to bypass cars in front of them more easily rather than having to negotiate which would then have likely resulted in them slowing down and detonating the bomb automatically. Although it's great to actually see the Kit staying at the start of a turbo boost as opposed to how it was done in G1 where you can only see Kit Prime landing. I just felt that Justin could have put more effort in saying Turbo Boost and not like he was phoning it in. Michael Knight Sr. always made the point of raising his voice because it was something exciting to happen for him as much as it was for the audience. Minor note is that I am glad it wasn't such a huge build up to Turbo Boost happening as Knight in Shining Armor took 5-7 to seven seconds of going through the air intake and seeing the inner mechanics of the engine firing the Turbo Boost jets before the kit stand would actually take off. I'm all for seeing how it works, but I'm glad it was cut down to even less time and just got on with it. I could not fault the writing as it was solid and gave a pulse racing experience that had been missing for much of the series. Now that's not to say that some episodes were enjoyable. No, far from it. They just didn't have this edge of your seat that this one truly delivered, which was symbolized when it went down to the wire in accosting Stevens and disarming the bomb. It was clever on the writer's behalf to have them continue the journey north with Kit aboard the carrier plane as the GPS does not measure altitude, which is why the nuclear plant was not destroyed as it had exploded over the target in the stratosphere but not exploding the plant. Stratisfaction guaranteed. Kudos if you get the reference. Everyone delivered a great performance, among which were Rick Hoffman and Sidney Tamia Portier as Carrie, who really sold her part when she was laid up in the hospital after being critically injured in the last episode, which saw her exit from the series, as her father states that it will be months before she's all healed up. All which to note was guest starred by Shaft legend Richard Roundtree. Can you dig it? Another episode with a somber ending as Charles Grayman never got off the C-31 carrier plane when it was revealed that it exploded with Charles presumed caught in the blast that killed him. Deanna really sold Sarah's emotional state and the episode ends with a fade out of Mike comforting Sarah in an embrace and Kit's scanner is the last thing you see, which to me was a great way to visually end this week. But what was to come next episode? Oh boy. If you thought some of the episodes jumped the wrecks before, wait till next time. Night to King's Pawn. Good night from the night. Thank you